Welcome back. So I've been messing around with the monocle for a while now and it's this cool little piece of tech that just clips onto your glasses and you know, changes the way you can get started with AR. And it's built by this company called Brilliant Labs as a part of their open source augmented reality ecosystem. I actually had a chance to talk to Bobak, their CEO back at AWE, about you know the design process, the ideas that went into making the monocle, and you know what else he'd want to see from the AR space as a whole, which I'll get to, but first I want to talk about the hardware. The monocle only weighs like 15 grams, but there is a ton packed into here. There's a 720p camera, Bluetooth 5.2, two capacitive touch sensors, a Nordic MCU, an FPGA chip for graphics acceleration, and a 70 milliamp hour battery for about an hour of runtime. And in the charging case, there's another 450 milliamp hours, so you can charge the monocle about six times. For the optics, there's a 640 by 400 micro OLED panel that's bonded to the main housing, and there's a reflective surface that directs the image back into your eye with a 20 degree field of view. It does feel a little small, um, but you know, this is a really small product. I, you know, just for some of the new AI stuff that they're working on, it'd be great to fit more content into your field of view. And you know, to try and picture a 20 degree field of view, you can hold your hand out in front of you at an arm's length and then stretch your thumb and little finger out as wide as you can. And then imagine a rectangle about that width. Uh, that's pretty close to the FOV from the monocle. And I'll put the link down below the like button. That's just a really cool way you can also measure the sky. Uh, it, it's a really cool thing I found on an astronomy site. But if you've had a chance to try the monocle or any other AR glasses, like let me know down in the comments like what you think about field of view and what you think is the most optimum. Also one downside with the type of optics that they're using here, uh, whatever you're looking at is also visible from the other side, which might not be the best if you're wearing the monocle and walking around while trying to interact with other people, it might just make them feel like you're not paying attention to them. But it's still a nice display. Like the text is sharp and the colors look really good. I mean, overall, the monocle does look amazing. Like it's fully transparent. So you can see pretty much everything that went into it. And like I mentioned earlier, it just clips onto your existing glasses. So you don't have to worry about like prescriptions or anything. I don't wear glasses. So I just ended up putting this on blue light or sunglasses. But you know, it is fully open source and the CAD files are available on their site. So you could theoretically design anything to hold it. And it really seems like a lot of thought went into the design of this product. So when I was talking to Bobak, I wanted to ask him like, what do they keep in mind? And what were their priorities when they're building the monocle? We felt there was room in the AR space to do a completely open source and AI focused alternative e to a lot of the closed source and kind of game focused companies that were out there. We, we love the idea of devices that are small, ideally pocket sized or, um, you know, very lightweight. Um, don't cost more than 500 bucks um, and are capable of running all sorts of applications, not only on device, but also tethered to the phone uh, and, and to the cloud as well. But moving on to the software, that's also just as impressive as the hardware for the monocle, um, since it's also fully open sourced. You can just connect to it from your phone or your laptop via Bluetooth and send Python programs straight to it, which is super cool and really easy to do. Like now the barrier for programming in AR is buying the monocle and having a smartphone with a Bluetooth connection. Brilliant Labs also did a really good job with their documentation and just examples of how to use their MicroPython API along with a ton of other resources on their site. But if you wanna do something more than just sending a few lines through the web interface, like, you know, building full apps, there's a VS Code extension that has their API and all their protocols built in. And this isn't just some open source project you have to learn. There's like a whole community around it. Like if you join their Discord, there's always someone willing to help you, you know, answer any questions, give some advice. And there's a whole channel dedicated to just people showing the cool stuff that they've built on this. Also, I like how Brilliant Labs, you know, like from the ground up built this for creatives and hackers. Cause like, there's so much available information using their documentation, it's crazy. Like pretty much everything from block diagrams to every chip that they use to the actual disassembly process that you would need to do to push a custom firmware that you build to the device. And all of this makes the monocle appealing to like such a wide group of people with varying levels of like coding experience. Like beginners can just stick with the Python and start off simple, while more experienced devs could literally go as deep as they'd want into the software stack. So when I was talking to Bobak, that was one of the things I asked him, right? Like, was the goal of the monocle to bring the barrier to entry to AR development as low as possible? I think from the get-go, we uh, looked at things like open source and like a Python with the community in mind. We really felt that now, the best companies are those that are ushered into the existence on the backs of a community. Mm -hmm. um, so that means a lot of high, high touch engagement, a lot of support, um, and just kind of co-ideation of things. And we've been surprised at not only how many folks are interested, but how many we've sold in such a short period. Mm -hmm. We've spent nothing on marketing, uh, literally just a couple LinkedIn messages, yeah. and suddenly we had an influx of people interested. People flooded into Discord, like you said. And, yeah. uh, we've been just delighted. 
Uh, it's been awesome. The monocle is a really impressive first product from Brilliant Labs. Like I feel like every time I go back to it, you know, I've been using this for the past few months and there's a new device firmware update or there's a new cool project on the Discord or on their on their website under the community projects that you can check out. Also, their website says that they're building an ecosystem, which you know implies that there's gonna be a lot more devices than just the monocle. So it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. And not just from Brilliant Labs, you know, like I'm excited to see what happens with AR in general. Disclosure, I do work at DigiLens, which is another AR company. But the last thing I asked Bobak was, what's he excited to see from the rest of the industry? Being open kind of lifts all boats. So what I mean by that is we can do, for example, a great GPT integration with Monocle, as we're currently doing, and at the same time make that totally open for other device makers to fork and use for their own devices. And so that means that you can have openness, but then you can also have interoperability. And, and so we then just focus on doing hardware that continues to slim down, to get lighter, to be more beautifully designed, while well, at the same time developing services and applications that are open and allow people to use things no matter what device they're using. Awesome, so you're kind of lifting that off the weight off your shoulders of making everything run well together. You just make really good hardware and let the community and like third party take care of solid software that'll run really well. But thanks for watching. This was my first like actual interview and it was a ton of fun. A huge thank you to Bobak for making the time to do it. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos about tech, cameras, and making. Here's a video about the Pixel 7 and here's a video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the best.